<clears throat> Can you hear me now? I did not plug in the mic like a classic champ. Welcome back, everybody! <laughs> Dirk, the Red Panda, here with Tennis Ace. Okay, now you can hear me. I have the mic plugged in now. So, great to hear y'all. And Rajay, I, it's great to see you. So, <laughs> I know you have to leave now, so hi and goodbye. <laughs> but anyway, the update today is Shoichi, day 36. I'm excited for this one. We are finally playing some more tennis in Tennis Ace, and... It is the midst of the regional tournament. I wouldn't be sure if I call it championships just yet. We only played the first round yesterday. In game, not in real life. It's been a few months. Also, I'm not sure if I'm going to be keeping like my loads and stuff on my Mac anymore. This might be my last stream on the Mac version of OBS, so... <laughs> There might be some differences in setup in the future. Still debating that. Still kind of in a zone of figuring things out. But yeah, it's all good. We are getting things pretty settled. Uh, as I say, speaking of settle, let me settle in and type in the timestamps. Oh shoot, why do I have YouTube open on my phone? I just realized I had to use that to sign in for something. Yeah, sorry for the initial issues. I just got a bit caught up in some confusion. Yeah, so hopefully everybody's doing well today. Um, I am still getting things officially settled out. The music is quite l Oh, is it not too loud? I'm just not sure. Um, let me know if my balance is off, if I'm too quiet to the music. Otherwise, we will begin. So, we got 10 seconds left. Everybody, hurry up. Get in positions. Stations. Battle loaded. Get ready. Get prepared. Today is day 36 of Shoichi. Let's get started. Um... Which one's the right save? Uh, 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 um, this one? Yes, this one. <laughs> cool. Ah, here we go. Relaxing on our futon in the hotel with our not boyfriend at this route, Case K. This is my least favorite part of traveling to competitions. <gasps> Today is Friday! Not in California! <laughs> in Tennis Ace. But it is also Friday in California IRL. Just went to the beach, speaking of which. Alright, here we go. Somehow, I managed to drag my drowsy ass out of bed and down to the hotel lobby almost first thing in the morning. A freaking miracle, am I right? Since Kaycoon wasn't in my room when I woke up, I expected to see him down here, maybe even with Saya, but he's nowhere to be found. <clears throat> Actually, I can't see any of my schoolmates in here at all. Weird. Am I really the first to wake up? Did everybody vanish? Hmm. It is a little early. What time did I get up yesterday? 6 a.m.? And Kekun had already been up for at least an hour by then. Well, I mean, it's 5.45 right now. Maybe he went somewhere else. That much would be fine. But even with Saya-chan not here... But even Saya-chan isn't here. I'm so tired I can't even read. Where the hell is everybody? <clears throat> Excuse me, has anyone from my group gone out by chance? Oh yes, the hair you've been sharing a room with without a bit under half an hour ago. He was wearing a hoodie and running shoes, so I assume he went out for a jog? Oh, makes sense. 
Has anybody else come downstairs? Um, uh, not so far, no. All right. Uh, thanks again. <laughs> I guess I'll wait around till everyone else gets up. Of course. Feel free to relax in the lounge for as long as you need. I nod at the vixen mo moaning at the front desk. I nod at the vixen ma manning. I nod the vixen manning the front desk today, pulling out my phone and making my way to the sitting area without giving it much thought. It's far too early for me to try to message someone, and I don't really feel like going for a jog like Hagkun did. In fact, I would have stayed in bed if I hadn't been feeling so restless. I guess even I'm not completely immune to the tense feeling you get during competitions. Maybe it's because this is my last one? I thought the Nationals are your last one, dude. I'm so confused. Ugh. I let everyone else's constant babbling and sentimentality about it be my last time get in my head. Shoichi also tends to get up pretty early, doesn't he? Maybe I could shoot him a message. At least to ask him what time he'll be coming by. But at the same time, I don't want to risk waking him up if he isn't awake yet. God damn it, Nico. Why do you have to be so indecisive? Unable to make my goddamn mind up, I end up mindlessly swiping around on my phone, browsing the internet for some kind of distraction to break from the tedium of waiting. At the very least, it beats being left alone with my thoughts and anxieties. Wonder if there are any results up on the tournament board. Today is the second day of competition, but the level is still quite low for me. <laughs> At least for my first round of the day. <laughs> so cocky. Keiko should be playing against you, Yakun, today. Oh dear god, I forgot about that. Is that supposed to be round two of today? Because I know he's the seventh? One, two, three. Yeah, seventh seed. And I did write a diagram out for this. And, uh, 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 um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, Yuya is supposed to be the third seed now that he beat the third seed. So three versus seven, or, well, technically three versus six. Uh, yeah, that's supposed to be the quarterfinals. That's the third game of today. I'm kind of confused. Anyway, Keikun should be playing against Yuya Kun today. Regardless of which of them wins, it at least promises to be more interesting than playing against a bunch of no-name players with barely any kind of record to their names. <laughs> Peasants. I don't even know if I could pick one of them I would prefer playing against. They are both such a pain in the ass as opponents. If I could skip all the way to the finals, I would. Especially since I'm feeling a lot more confident about taking Tana Bay on this time than I have been in, God, a while. I might have to do a bunch of saving today, won't I? Every time I've thought about playing against him the last few years, i felt nothing other than anxiety and a low level of dread. To think that I feel a little excited about it after so long... I almost forgot what that was like. On an impulse, I decide to check my messages, scrolling down the list looking for the last time I talked to Tanabe. It takes a while to find it, considering how far down our conversation was. Hard to think it's almost been three years. Looking these up is a little nostalgic. It's weird to think that I didn't know the last time we chatted and joked around as friends would really be the last time. <sighs> Every now and again, I find myself going over these and wanting to reach out, but I always decide not to for one reason or another. 
The truth is, I'm probably scared of what would happen if I did. It's not like we haven't talked at all since then. There would be some idle chit-chat or matches, but it would never amount to anything other than small talk. At this point, I'm convinced that even if we did decide to try and be friends again, we would have no idea how to talk to each other. I definitely don't feel like I'm even close to being the same person that I used to be back in middle school. Besides, even if I didn't reconsider that, there's the fact that the reason we drifted apart has never been resolved. We had that one fight years ago, and then... I need to really stop doing this. I just keep torturing myself every time I do. Not that talking to myself is any better. Though I will admit that vocalizing it definitely makes it feel more real. I really do need to stop. Otherwise, I'll spin myself in circles again. It's been a few months since I've gone into one of these spirals. When even was the last time? February? March? I don't really even remember. Unable to get the thoughts of Tanabe out of my head, I decided to lead further back into my chair, doing my absolute best to try and fuse myself with it. Or at least... I'm sure that's what it looks like I'm doing from the outside. Man, I am such a mess. Oh, Nikosan? Oh, Nikosan. My ears quickly flicker at the direction of the familiar, deep baritone voice calling out to me, soon to be followed by the rest of my head. I see Case Case standing a few steps behind me looking down at me with a hint of worry in his eyes. Is everything okay? You're up way too early. You do know I could say the same thing about you, right? What were you doing out of the hotel before 6am? I was feeling restless, so I went out for a quick jog. Careful you don't end up tiring yourself out before the competition. I somehow doubt that could happen. If anything, I feel like I have too much energy. Eh, been there. Although it's been a while since I've gone through that feeling of being restless and uneasy. I decide to omit the part about me having come down here this early in the morning because I also feeling a little restless. Even if I'm going through something similar, I know my own problems are orders of magnitude behind Kaycoons right now. To me, even if I dropped out of the competition right now, I'd still be all qualified for the All Japan. No matter how you look at it, I'm in a privileged position right now. In fact, my restlessness stems from a desire to play. It comes from looking forward to face Tanabe again. I doubt it is the case for Keikun. If anything, I'm willing to bet that the thoughts go through his mind right now are less I can't wait to play and more I need to not be eliminated today. Of course, there's always the chance that I'd be way off base, but I don't know. Knowing Keikun, I'd put my odds at around 80 to 85 percent that I'm right. Then, how do you deal with it? Honestly, I'd say that you've got it pretty spot on already. Get myself moving to burn off that extra nervous energy? Not much else you can do other than that. Figured. Worth a shot, though. With a loud sigh, Case K plopped himself down on the armchair across from me, resting his elbows on his knees and cupping his face with both hands in an adorably overdramatic fashion. 
I'll refrain from commenting on it because I don't want to be on the other end of the dirty looks he'd shoot my way if I did, but uh, man, <laughs> this shit's funny. You'll be fine. Today shouldn't be so bad. Easy for you to say. You're not the one that has to play against that smug, annoying, overgrown chihuahua today. Ha, takes all my willpower to hold back from laughing upon hearing Case K refer to that as an overgrown chihuahua. Somehow the mental image is just too funny for me. He certainly yips like one. The guy definitely never shuts up. So, you're nervous about it now? Where did yesterday's bravado go? Same place that baseless confidence always goes. It washed down the river as soon as the adrenaline settled down and reason returned to my brain. That's a very poetic way of saying you're lost in your nerve. Those are some Awfully brave words for someone that sleeps in the same room as me. Well, yeah, it's not like you're going to do anything to me while I sleep. That would be a crime. Only if I get caught. Work can always be outscored, after all. Okay! This is sounding a lot more menacing than I originally intended, and it's freaking me out a little bit. Alright there. You could say you're joking now. Please? <laughs> but am I? For the love of God, man, just say psych right this instant! Okay, okay. I take it back. I won't ease you over it anymore. Good boy. Now I kinda want you, Yakun, to beat you. You're just as smug as he is. But at least he can claim ignorance of how he comes across. Jeez. I really don't need to fear for my life this early in the morning. Nah. A healthy dose of panic and dread is good for the metabolism. Take it from me. I go through it every day. I can't tell whether you're choking or not. And that terrifies me more than anything. Who, who, who knows? Jesus Christ, this man does not play around. We went from zero to a hundred real fucking fast. While I struggle to come up with some kind of response to the hair that continues staring ever so smugly at me, the sound of footsteps and loud sighing echoes down the hall. When I turn around to look, I see Saya making her to us from the dining room with the most defeated look on her face. Hell, she's dragging her feet. I can count on my fingers how many times I've seen her do that. Good. Morning? Is everything okay? I notice that she's carrying a single croissant in her hands, which she bites into before plopping herself down on the seat right next to mine, making me readjust myself in the couch for a bit of extra personal space. Nothing fucking rough to fuck. Uh, I'm sorry, what? She said, there's nothing good left to eat. Fuck. Saya nods absentmindedly while chewing on her stale croissant from yesterday. Even I can hear that there's no crisp left in it whatsoever. You can understand that. Of course. I've known her for so long I might as well have Saya translation software installed in my brain at this point. Fuck. <sighs> Saya cries out in gibberish while munching on the last of her food, leaning over and letting herself plop on my lap with little more than a muted thud. What the? What did she say now? She said, "Ah." Oh. 
boy, I haven't seen Sia like this in a while. Moody? Sure. Angry? Absolutely. Sad? Every now and again. But clingy? What's up this time? You're not sick again, are you? I reach for Saya's head on my lap, gently parting the fur on her forehead with my fingers and proceeding to softly pet her. What the hell is going on? Have you never seen Saya like this? No. Hmm. I guess it would make more sense. The last time was more Saki senpai moving away and they broke up. But that was the end of our freshman year. It's no surprise you weren't there to see it. Um, I guess there was also the time when she got food poisoning in Hong Kong. But wait, that was also in our freshman year, wasn't it? Stop talking about me like I'm not here. Well, you're not contributing much to the conversation, are you? Saya protests once more in some gibberish that I'm pretty sure was never intended to be a word. In response, I just continue to stroke her fur, trying to get her to quiet down a little bit. Or, well, maybe quiet isn't the right word. If anything, she's too quiet right now. Whatever. Are you sure you're okay? You don't have food poisoning again, do you? You were eating a croissant just now, and those have a ton of butter. I'll be fine. A little bit of butter won't kill me. I'm just hungry. Hmm. I suppose that's better than the alternative. Remember when you and Morisaki senpai broke up? I had to spend three hours stroking your head like this. Excuse me, what? It wasn't that long. Yeah, it was. Sai is a woman of many moods. Most of them can be a little bit of pain in an ass to deal with. Gloomy Saya, though? She's kind of like a cat that wants to crawl into a corner whenever she feels sad or sick. It doesn't happen often, since she's usually the type to bounce back real quick. But when it does, Shuichi and I end up having to take turns pampering her like this. It was endearing when we were kids, but... Actually, no. This happens rare enough that it's a little bit endearing. Breakfast will be served in half an hour or so. You can eat then, can't you? I guess... Mizuguchi-san? Are you sure you're okay? I'm worried. She's fine. She gets like this sometimes. She just needs some attention before she can bounce back. Well, unless she's sick. Things can get a bit ugly in that case. I said, stop talking about me like I'm not here. Then maybe you should consider contributing to the conversation. Hmm? Seriously, what's going on? This isn't just about food, is it? Maybe, I don't know. You don't know. I just... Ugh, I feel... Ugh. Saya makes an exaggerated gesture with her hands to emphasize her point, groaning quite loudly after and burying her face again in my legs. What? No clue. That's a new entry into the dictionary. Oh. Is fue supposed to be like meh? You feel meh? God, no! I feel. Ugh. Yeah, I have no idea what that means. God, 
I don't either. I try my best to keep a straight face throughout Saya's little tantrum. Not because I'm weirded out or anything, but because the whole thing is far too funny. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, Keikun seems to be struggling to keep a straight face for a whole other reason. Don't worry about so much, Keikun. You get used to it. I don't even know what it is. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Saya-chan. What? How are you feeling about your matches today? You're not feeling insecure or anything like that, are you? What? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Hmm. Strikeout, eh? Let's see. What else could it be? Oh, um, maybe... Hey, Saya-chan. Uh, could it be that what you're feeling right now is melancholy? Huh? At the mention of the word melancholy, she straightens up on my lap, turning her face towards me. She looks me in the eye while I continue to stroke her head, almost urging me to continue. It's our senior year. Once we're done with the Kanto Regionals, all that will be left for us will be the All Japan Junior. And then... That's it. This is the last one for us before we graduate. Maybe you're feeling a little blue because of that? All at once, Saya-chan sits up, staring at me wide-eyed. Her movements are so sudden that even I see Keikun flinching from the corner of my eye. She points a finger at me, gawking in shock and stuttering quite noticeably. I'm imagining like the guy, like the meme where the guy's like pointing at the camera with like the beard and everything. He's like, <laughs> Saya just does that. Th th that! That's it! That, th that right there! I, I didn't know what that was! Are... Are you serious? Saya-chan leans back on the couch, though thankfully without dropping down to my lap again. She crosses her arms, looking away from Keikun with a mixture of embarrassment and frustration. I have to admit, she's a little bit adorable when she gets like this. Get off my back! Never felt like this before. How was I supposed to know what it was? That... I... But... It, you... Ugh. After trying and failing to come up with words for several seconds, Keikun finally gives up altogether, hiding his face on his hands and stifling a loud groan in the process. Sorry... I still have no idea what just happened. I don't judge you. I've been dealing with Saya's tantrums for 12 years, and I barely only understand it myself. Wait. If even Mizuguchi-san couldn't put a name on what she was feeling, how were you able to do it, Nikosan? Because I'm feeling the same way. God, this reminds me of, like, Back in high school, I had my last tournament, like, the, the last tournament, not this, like, last of the regionals type of thing, but our whole entire team was, like, all seniors and, like, one junior, and it felt the same way just, like, talking to the one junior about it, because it was, like, he had another year, and, like, all of us were, like, this is our final shebang, and it just felt so weird. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. But, yeah, it was just, like, just so melancholy, that feeling. I also may have gotten a little bit of food poisoning, or I wasn't sure if it was food poisoning, but we had Mexican on one of the days, and <laughs> yeah, didn't sit well with me. Luckily, it didn't ruin my playing, but <laughs> I got up in the mornings being like, oh, uh, I feel a little heavier today. But yeah, that was kind of a sad time, but at least we had a decent finish. We were in like the top 12. Good times. 
Whoa, you are? I thought I was the only one. Mm-hmm. I thought I was immune to this kind of thing, but I've been feeling restless since I woke up this morning. I even woke up earlier than usual because of it. That's why I came downstairs so goddamn early, too. Ah, uh, that explains it. Keisuke mutters quietly to himself, acting as if he'd been wondering about it this entire time. I know I'm not a morning person, but you don't need to act so surprised that I got up so early. Sheesh! I guess even we're not made of steel. It's probably normal for seniors to feel like this. Today's the last day of June. It's also Friday. In California. <laughs> We're officially past the halfway mark of the year. And while our school year may last until March, it's hard not to get into sentimental feelings when you think about it. Yeah. I didn't even realize that was what it was. I was up so late last chatting with the Kanachan, and I guess I was hit by the realization that we wouldn't see each other again after the end of this year. Makes sense. I mean, Kana is a junior. We'll graduate and go to the U- I mean, go out of the country to pursue our careers while we she'll stay up here in the tennis club. Right as I was about to pair back Sai and I's plan to go to the U.S., I remembered the offer I'd gotten from that one college in Canada. Better choice to go to Canada, Yuichi. I mean, Nico. I mean... Just don't go to the U.S., please. The one I hadn't replied to yet. The one I ghosted. Or even talked to Sai Chan about it. Unable to bring myself to say that I'd go to the U.S. and feeling guilty about it, not talking to Sai about it, the offer, I quickly corrected myself, hoping that she wouldn't notice. Yeah, we'll be in completely different places in our life in less than a year's time. Thankfully, it seemed to have worked. Good thing Saya Chen gets a little distracted when she's in one of her moods. She's way too good at sniffing stuff out otherwise. I swear, she's like one of those truffle hunting pigs. Except for feelings. Yeah, I could see how it would be a bit emotional to think about. That's... Hmm. KSK fidgets on his seat, looking between Sai and I a few times while making exaggerated thinking noises. When that isn't enough to get our attention, he clears his throat instead, staring expectantly at the two of us. What? Do you also get sentimental when you think about how I will stay in Japan after you two graduate? As soon as we hear this question, Sai and both sigh loudly and in unison, making the hare's eyes go wide. What? You won't? These are two completely different things, Keikun. You just talked about getting all melancholic because you won't see Kana-san once you graduate since she's a junior. Well, I I'm a junior too, so... Yeah, but Kana-chan is a school friend. She might be a good school friend, but she's still a school friend. Meaning? A school friend is someone you text to catch up with every now and again. But otherwise, isn't that big a part of your life? You're part of our group. You're one of our closest friends. You're going to be part of our lives regardless. Even if we move away. Yeah. You think that distance is all it takes to make people cut contact? What exactly do you think will happen once we move away? Do you think I'll no longer talk to Aki? Or that we'll no longer talk to Shoichi? That's... Not really the same. Why not? Because. Because Arata is his boyfriend and your childhood friend. 
Akiyoshi kun is his little brother, and you've known him since he was a baby. You guys' relationships go way further back than with me. That doesn't really matter. Hmm. Sounding completely unconvinced, Kun leans back on his chair, seemingly choosing to look away from the two of us and staying silent. That was the perfect time to drink the rest of my drink. Which I actually didn't finish because I tried to say this quickly. I will continue to slump in the back of my chair while I finish my drink. Ah, sad drinking thoughts. Sorry, I needed a segue to do that. Alright, I'm done. Aww, come on. Don't be like that. Yeah, you're making way too big of a deal of this. We're seniors. We're entitled to be a little sentimental. Yeah, I don't get sentimental over the idea of leaving you because I never once thought you that you and I wouldn't talk anymore after we graduated. I... guess? Uh-oh. Now he's sulking. I didn't know Keikun was this sensitive. Or is it just that he's insecure? Welcome to my world, Keikun. Maybe he's in a bit of a bad mood. I wouldn't blame him. He's clearly stressed out and nervous from the moment I first saw him. During long competitions like these, especially ones where you're away from home, having to travel and stay in an unfamiliar place, all of that can serve as a major stressor. So while I absolutely think he's being ridiculous here, I keep those thoughts to myself and instead try my best to be comforting. It's the truth. I don't know any other ways for us to say it. There is a distinction between a good friend and a friendly acquaintance. Yeah, some people you're friends with because you see each other often and you have somewhat similar interests, but there isn't a super strong connection or anything. Other people are different. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Can we talk about something else? And our attempts at being comforting have completely and utterly failed. God damn it. Something else. Sure. How about... Um... Hey, uh, I'm really excited to watch your last match of the day today. I got it. I knew it. Uh, 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 where, did it where is it? I knew it. I knew it was going to be the last match of the day. Called it. <laughs> oh yeah, you're playing against that Yuya guy, right? If I get to the quarterfinals, yeah. Aw, I don't think there's any chance of you losing in the next round. You don't know that. Upsets happen, you know. Uh, I guess? Jesus, how do I even talk to him when he's like this? Come on, Kaycoon, stop sulking. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Yeah, that's it. S that's it, Saiyachan, you can talk him down. Go, go, Saiyachan! You can do it, Saiyachan! Woo! Can I just point out that you showed up out of nowhere sulking and pouting and clinging to Nikosan? In public, I might add. And I at no point told you you were making a big deal out of nothing. I guess you've got a point there. What? No! Don't give in to him that easily! Fight! Struggle! Show him who's boss! I 
don't want to deal with Keikun sulking all day like this. It's way too awkward. And there's way too many timestamps there. There we go. Every time I do this expression, the timestamp thingy comes up. I have to double click it to make it go away. Yeah, that's totally fair. I'm a complete and total wuss. But still, you can't tell me you're not at least a little bit excited. Ah, come on! You spent weeks talking about how you hoped you'd get a play against him again so you could get your revenge! I guess I did say that. And you've improved a lot over the past few months. You're a completely different player than you were last time. And even then, you only lost by a little bit. I guess that is also true. <laughs> you should be excited. This is your chance to show him who's boss. Especially after yesterday's disrespect. Uh, you're not just going to take it lying down, are you? <laughs> of course not. I'm not so wimpy that I'll let him get away with talking trash right to my face. There we go! You're right. I shouldn't be getting all in my head like this. I have every reason to be confident in myself. Of course you do! You've been crushing it so far! Both of your victories yesterday were super comfortable. Ah, shit. One, two... No, wait. One, two... I thought there was only one victory yesterday. Basket! Basket, you lied! <laughs> Thank you, Saya-chan. I appreciate it. Huh. <laughs> it's like Nico's just like... Yeah, that was a typo. <laughs> I guess killing them with kindness really does work sometimes. Color me impressed. Well done, Saya. Well, I for one am excited to watch your match. <laughs> I'm lucky that there won't be as much overlap between us like there was yesterday. There won't. How do you... Nikokun will have the first... Oh, I thought she was worried about it. Ahem. <clears throat> Nikokun will have the first match of the day on Court 1 at the same time as I will be playing the first match on Court 3. <laughs> Folks, hold on. I need to get the iPad. Look, we're taking notes. Folks, get out of the way. Everybody, move. The iPad is coming out. Opening up Procreate. I am way too ridiculous. This is so dumb. <laughs> Bracket. We're gonna technically move Case K to sixth seed technically on this one, just because uh inconsistency with the schedule. Blah 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 blah. Yep, okay. I should iPad share this actually. I could. Don't know if I should. Ah shoot, I need to erase this first. Everybody, be quiet. <laughs> oh, I thought I'm still surprised. Uh, let me just. Please be happy about the calming music while I do this. Oh, geez, I forgot I have that. Uh, uh, pardon the interruption. Y'all are going to be so surprised about how I did this. We're going to go to window capture. iPad. This is so dumb, but... I'm opening up Zoom just to do this. Do you know how ridiculous this is? I'm setting up a meeting with myself just so I could share this stupid event. <laughs> just this dang bracket that I made. No, stop the video, stop, mute everybody. <laughs> I have muted right now. 
via airplay. Last time I did this, I think I just crashed everything, but that was because it was a full-on art stream. It is loading. Folks, we almost are ready. <laughs> this is the dumbest gosh darn thing I've ever done. Airplay, airplay, airplay. Airhost? There it is. <laughs> Folks, the bracket. I'm just going to put it all here for reference. <laughs> Whenever we need it, I can just hide it and show it. All right. It may be a bit laggy, so apologies for that. God dang it. Inking, I, I normally did technical pen on this one. Oh, no, I didn't. What the hell did I even use for this? Syrup? No, I didn't use syrup. But anyway, folks, this is what the bracket looks like. This is why they're going to face each other in match three. Three versus six. Meanwhile, Mishimaya, down here, two versus seven. The winner of Keisuke and y Yuya are going to face each other in the semifinals. Meanwhile, we got Tanabe on the other side. I probably should fill out Tanabe, assuming he won. There's no way he's going to get upset, right? <laughs> right? Y'all probably think this is just ridiculous. And I'm loving it. I'm embarrassing myself for views. What the hell pen did I even use? Jeez. I don't think it was this pen, but this is pretty damn close. Just... Nope, definitely not Gasinki Ink. Gasinki. Jesus born, it's Jason Christ. Okay, we'll just settle with that for now. Okay, we'll get back to the schedule. This is what I started out on. Day two, everybody shut up. We got the schedule out. I got this wrong. I predicted that um, it was going to be the boys on courts one or three and four, not the other way around. This is a big deal. And now that we know the one versus 64 match is going to be on one court, meanwhile, we got main character syndrome and put. Nico on court one, so this is gonna be two versus thirty-one slash thirty-four. Yuya versus that oh, Jesus Christ. Nico, not Yuya. And Saya's on court three. Excuse me. At the same time, ahem, Nico Kuhn will have the first match on the day on court one at the same time as I will be playing the first match on court three. I'll also have the sixth match on court four during the afternoon while Nico Kuhn has the fifth match on court two. Math. Everybody, we're doing maths today. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. I'm just gonna call it one versus 16. Screw it. We're just gonna do it in seeding favorites. And fifth match for Nico Kuhn on court two. I am so satisfied by the goddamn consistency. <laughs> this is my butter and bread. God damn it, not. I keep thinking Yuichi, that's why. 
Where is Kaycoon playing? We gotta know. You'll have the third match on court five and the seventh and final match on court eight. Okay, third match. I thought there were... I'm having brain rot, folks. Everybody, the brain rot is real. We'll have to figure out the consistencies later. Okay, bracket. KSK would be facing... Blah, 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 blah. Winner of 10. Shit. I think I effed something up. There we go. So KSK is going to be facing an unseated player in day two first. I'm just going to put NA. And his final match is going to be against Yuya, I'd assume. Ba, 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 ba. Seventh on court eight. God dang it. Okay. Also, gotta just change this technically, just for the template. There we go. Oh, better. I'm gonna wait for, like, just watch somebody just message me and be like, actually, this is wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. You'll have the seventh and final match on court eight. Good job, Saya. Thanks for the help. Oh, I didn't even show the... There we go. We'll be right back after these messages. And I'll pause the share. Can I... Yeah, I'll stop the share temporarily. Just to... Just so I don't kill the battery. Okay. What? Uh, how do you? Oh, well, I was drawing it on the thing called Procreate. <laughs> Thanks, Professor Dirk. No problem. Sai is manipulating Kekun so well, indeed. I did tell you yesterday that she's the type to memorize all this stuff. Sai and I would get along so well. Honestly, I'd just be like, okay, based on this bracketology, 3 versus 6, 7 versus 10, she'd be like, uh huh, uh huh. Didn't I? But, but down to that much detail? She knows how brackets work. Come on, it's not like my pool play memorization that I did back in club volleyball, where they had to customize it each and every tournament because they had pool play rounds and brackets. Oh, those are some fun days. Anyway, <laughs> I'm pretty awesome, aren't I? You sure are something. Keisuke sighs, shaking his head with a complicated look on his face. Then again, I can't imagine him being upset or anything since he does have a smile on his face. How many times- HOW MANY TIMES WILL I HAVE TO TELL YOU THIS, OLD MAN? <laughs> How many times will I have to tell you before you finally trust me on this? I know Saiyachan well. I know, but still. That's some seriously good memory. 
And I do tend to pride myself on my ability to memorize without relying on anemones, mnemonics. I'm not sure if that's how you spell it. God damn, if that is, my brain is fried. Mnemonics. What the fuck? How? Why? Why is it spelled like that? Why? Why? Why is it spelled like that? I hate that so much. That is wrong. Dictionary should be arrested for that. Memorization isn't that hard. We are talking about the girl that had 1,400 different kanji memorized by the time she was eight. What? Uh, do they even teach that many kanji in elementary school? They do not. I think that's about as much you'd expect from a high school student. I think. I mean, I just learned a bunch of them because it seemed fun at the time. I did get bored of it eventually. Just out of curiosity, how many do you know right now? I don't know, 2200 or so? Why? Uh, that's... That's so many! That's more than I know, and I had to learn a bunch because of my family. Saya is a force of nature. What about you, Nikosan? How many do you know? One. <laughs> Me? Eh, no idea. I don't really care enough to keep count. Why? Oh, thank God. Don't tell me you're feeling competitive over it now. No. I don't know. What's it to you? <laughs> I snort, shaking my head and looking away to try and contain the urge to laugh. Oh, that is so petty. <laughs> Oh my god, he's like a kid. At least he's not soaking anymore, but... Man, what a dork. Loser. <laughs> Careful, keep this up and you're going to end up turning into Shuichi. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Into Urata? What do you mean? When we were kids, Shoichi-kun kept trying to compete with us over everything. Granted, it was mostly with Niko-chan, but he did challenge me from some really silly things. Like? Like dunking our heads in a bucket and seeing who could hold their breath the longest? Or who could climb the highest on the old cedar tree we had at our old school that went all the way to the third story? Or who can spit the farthest? Which, just in case you're wondering... All me. That's... You're 18 years old and a girl. You sure you want to brag about being the one that can spit the farthest? God, a win's a win. Get off my ass. Aye aye, ma'am. I hadn't thought about this stuff in a while, though. <laughs> Weird to remember it like this. I guess the most random stuff can jog memories we've forgotten. Shuichi did try to challenge us a whole lot back when we were still kids. All the way up until we turned nine or so, and he still had that little personality problem of his. It's a good thing he mellowed out with time, but... I simply cannot imagine Rata doing any of these things. You two I can kind of see, but... Rata? Everybody's had a childhood. No matter how serious you are as an adult, we were all kids once. Some of us still are at heart. <laughs> Sion! <clears throat> Aw, don't think about yourself like that, Nico-kun. Ooh! It's you. I was talking about you. Nah. <laughs> Not possible. Ah! 
Without even thinking, I move on automatic, reaching for Saya's cheek, pinching it and twisting it. Ow! Ow! What are you doing? As soon as I realize what I'm doing, I let go right away, stifling the urge to laugh while I do my best to smile apologetically. Oops. Sorry. I didn't even think about it. Uh, oh my god, you're so dead. I, I, I'm shocked you managed to go through with that with no fear of death. Uh, that's um, what I used to do when we were kids. I guess the whole reminiscing plus dealing with Sayo while she was moody kind of brought it to my mind without even realizing. What? Oh, I forgot how much this used to hurt. Sorry. Saya painfully rubs her cheek, scooching a bit further away from me in the process. Although I don't think I pinched her that hard. Come on, suck it up. <laughs> I still feel a little guilty from doing it all in the first place. We're not kids anymore. We have a lot more strength nowadays. Stuff used to be your stuff that used to be cute when we were little can actually hurt someone nowadays. It's a lesson I had to learn after I started going through puberty. And one I wish Sai Chan would learn at some point. Since it really hurts when she hits me. Granted, it's usually my fault for intentionally setting her off in the first place. But still. Jeez. I hope my cheek doesn't end up swelling up or anything. God, it was a pinch. I doubt it will. We'll see about that. I feel like I just got transported to some kind of alternative reality where I don't actually know the people right now in front of me. Oh, grow up. Everybody has a past. Did I really see it right? Nikosan just pinched her cheek. God, are you listening to me? Hey! Saya snaps her fingers in front of Keikun's face. Oh, I thought she got pinched again. That's why I said it like that. Are you listening to me? Hey! Saya snaps her fingers in front of Keikun's face to try and get his attention, yet he continues to look completely lost in thought. It seems that in our reliving of our childhood habits, we somehow managed to break him for some reason. I let myself sink further back into my seat, pulling out my giant phone, which is an iPad I'm holding right now, and going back to browsing my old messages while tuning out the sound of Sai and Keisuke doing their thing. Eventually, I land myself on... What am I talking about? Eventually, I land on my conversation with Shoichi, and a smile comes to my face as I read the last message he sent me last night. Reading it again helps me dispel some of my earlier lingering unease. Later. Alright folks, we're gonna take a teensy tiny 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 minuscule, massively small, very s miniature break. Seven, yeah, okay. 107. We're gonna take a Five minute break. Just to give ourselves some time to stretch. And because that was a really long scene, so I'll set the time for 112. Alright, we'll be right back, folks.
I'm scratching my beard because I'm really thinking hard about the stupid bracket thing. I already have my dehydration, but I'm just giving everybody a little chance to just recuperate, re-cooperate, whatever you want to say and think. And readjusting my predictions for what the round two schedule looks like. Just because I get a feeling that some of the stuff is a little bit adjusted based on what Saya just mentioned. It shouldn't be too terrible, it's just... I think we might do something where it's like a little bit like pre-lunch break or whatever they kind of adjusted the schedule. Hmm. Maybe this might work? I am not exactly sure. I mean, the other thing that I'm wondering is that they mentioned two matches yesterday, which the day before they said there was only one? I mean, we only did mention one match that was played. Okay, I just had to do some maths. I also get the feeling that they might move up two of the round two matches just so that they all finish before lunch. Actually, no, that's physically impossible. Hmm. The struggle is real. No matter what two matches will be post-lunch. Oh, we got like 30 seconds left. My brother in Christ. Their predictions are going out the window. It's terrible. Okay, we're going to get started again. Sorry about that. We'll have to put this bracket away for now. All right, let's get started then. <clears throat> Today, Coach made sure to have us arrive a little earlier than yesterday at the tournament's venue. Something about wanting to avoid the hectic traffic of buses and players arriving for the competition. Even if the second day has half as many players left, it is still hectic. Hell, he even went for asking the hotel to serve breakfast half an hour earlier so we could eat something before leaving. Mostly because without the entrance ceremony that we had on the first day, the matches will be starting earlier today. God damn it. Right down the schedule. Everybody, we're going to have to rise for the national anthem of Celine Dion for this one. Ugh. And I wrote these on the template page. Stupid me, stupid, stupid, stupid Dirk. Miswriting stuff. God damn it. All right. And I'm assuming matches are going to be about an hour approximately, but, you know, you have to kind of give a loose schedule for these situations. It's still weird that there is a seven match type of schedule. Like, they'll still end a little earlier, but it's just the lunch break might be earlier this time. It'll be around noon instead of one. 
Okay. Ah. All right. Let's get back to it. Apparently the PS5 is Roach Motel, according to those who clean it. What? What did I just read? Okay, moving on. Mostly because without the entrance ceremony that we had on the first day, the matches will be starting earlier today. Sadly, however, it seems he wasn't the only one to have that thought. So we just ended up being stuck in traffic inside the bus for over 20 minutes. Just a few streets away from the venue. Never before I had seen the crocodile's tail thrashing around that much. And I certainly hope to never see it again either. I'm pretty sure I'd suffer from internal bleeding if he hit me with that thing. As soon as we get out of the driving death machine, Saya-chan leans against it, sighing loudly and, in my opinion, overdramatically. Finally! If I had to be stuck in that bus for another minute with your tapping foot and Coach's thrashing tail, I would have gone insane. Sorry about that. I was a little nervous, that's all. God, it's fine. I just need to get out of that bus. Oof. Ah, that hits the spot. The rabbit raises both her arms in the air, stretching herself for what feels like quite a long time. All while making loud groaning sounds. The part that's most startling, however, is when we hear something pop. Did you just pop your back? Yeah. Why? You keep doing that and you'll be needing back braces by the time you're in your 30s. Will not. Shut up. Aye, aye, ma'am. And stop calling me that. That's the second time today. Oh, Captain, my cap. You finished that sentence and you're a dead man. D? Uh, gotcha. I'm gonna go stretch my legs for a little bit. I can barely feel them. The bus was too cramped for me. What? You're the smallest one. Hey! Without giving me a backward glance, Saya walks away from us, heading towards an area with some shrubbery on the other side of the street and proceeding to do stretches away from us. <laughs> the coach is going to buy more cigs and beers. Have fun, kids. You're gonna be doing great out there. <laughs> Don't lose, okay? <laughs> you sure are brave. Huh? Me? How come? Trying to use a line from one of Mizuguchi san's favorite movies against her? Oh, you are so brave. Oh. That. Uh, I have my moments. Whatever you say, but you said it yourself this morning. She's on edge today. You want to keep messing with her? It's your funeral. I'll be fine. So long as I'm far away from you when it happens, then sure. You really have no faith in me whatsoever, do you? I've witnessed your... I've witnessed you pinching her today. Can you blame me? Um... Yes? What's that got to do with anything? For someone so smart, you get hung up on the strangest things sometimes. I think Coach might call us soon, so I'm gonna go get my bags out of the bus. We're kinda late on schedule. Ugh, it'll be fine. We still got here 30 minutes before matches start? Yes. And we need to sign in, get changed, warm up. You have the first match of the day. Don't you think you have ought to have a little more sense of urgency? Uh, no. <laughs> How about we try to enjoy ourselves a little bit here? There's no need to make a whole thing out of it. Enjoy ourselves? This is a competition, not a tour of some kind of holistic museum. A, a holistic what now? Keikun groans, reaching with his left hand to rub the bridge of his nose and shaking his head sideways in an over-the-top display of exasperation. Never mind. I'm going to take a walk, too. 
But, oh, god damn it. I try hard to protest, but the hare quickly walks past me and all too soon call back to Saya's earlier gesture. Right. I guess Saya-chan isn't the only one that's on edge today. I decide to shrug it off and ignore the sigh of my friends and sanity slowly being chipped away, instead electing to go on my phone and check my messages. Ooh, talk to you tomorrow. Call me when to get to the hotel. Can't wait to see you later. Heading to school now. Love you. Aw, love you too. Ah, he's so hot. Shoichi messaged me about an hour ago, letting me know he was on his way to class. I'm still a little bummed out that he couldn't come during the morning, but what can I do? I'd rather sulk in silence than tell him how I'm feeling and make him feel guilty. I'd just be a shit boyfriend if I do that. He didn't mention that he would be arriving, which... He didn't mention when he'd be arriving, which also makes me a tad anxious, if I'm being honest. <laughs> All the chat did say, love you too. <laughs> nice. He only said he'd be coming in the afternoon, but since I have the earliest time slots for both my morning and afternoon match... Write that down! Write that down, folks! Where do I write this down? Ah... The fifth time slot's the earliest time slot. Shoot! Did not mean to highlight that. Y'all want to see what I'm going nuts about. Y'all want to see! This calls for a new meeting. Class. We gotta do something. Class, we're back. I have to move this because the fifth slot's technically the earliest time slot. However, this means a few things. This might be moved up to noon. God damn it. Did I do it again? I did it again, didn't I? Everybody watch Dirk be a silly guy. I'm being very silly today, aren't I? Ah, oh, what a day. Now I can change this. So our lunch break is technically going to be moved down, but screw it, I drew that bar already. Who the hell cares? What does it even matter? Huh. So we're going to have to move round three up a little bit. Maybe like that? Not too sure. Maybe it might be something like this. All the round fours are... Mm -hmm. Maybe all the round fours are at the same time? We're just gonna predict that for now. 
everybody plays the last match of the day for court four. Question. Yes. What's the question? There are no bad questions. I said there are no bad questions. Are you too scared to answer? Was it something I said? It may have been something I said. We'll just do that for now. It does feel wrong, but... All right, we'll just leave it as is. Screw it. This is my prediction for what the match schedule is truly like for everybody. We'll turn it off, and I'll pretend like this never happened. I don't need anything. I just wanted to distract you so the cool kids could escape the class. It seems like the cool kids did escape the class. Y'all got away. All right. He only said he'd be coming in the afternoon, but since I have the earliest time slots for both my morning and my afternoon match, I worry that I'll already be done by the time he gets here. Part of the reason I was so anxious in the bus was precisely because I was worrying about that. It kind of surprises me how much it got to me not having Shuichi around yesterday. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I don't mind going a few days without seeing each other if it's necessary. I'm not going to flip out from it or anything, but if I'm having something this important going on, I kind of want him around for it. That's not bad, right? Nikosan! san I don't know who it is. Watch it be Shoichi. The sound of my name being called snaps my attention away from my phone. I quickly shove it back into my pocket looking around for the source of the call. Tried to find someone in the area, this full is more of a challenge than I thought it would be. But then... <gasps> oh, it's pretty close. It's June. I soon spot two familiar shapes walking towards our bus. I blink a couple of times and recognition takes a few seconds to settle for me. I'm more startled than anything, if I'm being honest. Aren't they... way early? Aki, I can sort of get, but... Jun? It's not even 9am! Uh, good morning, wow. Uh, you guys are here really early. After yesterday's incident and us barely making it in time, we decided to come here early today. Oh yeah. That... was a thing. That happened? <laughs> Thankfully, we did get some extra help, <laughs> which was really handy. Help? Well, first we had a near heart attack, then we had help. You see, Jun-san- Don't tell him! D uh, what? Oh my god, Aki knows and we don't? What? Okay, what's going on? N -n nothing it's nothing. Jun-san. Jun starts fidgeting where he stands, his tail lashing so violently behind him that I'm surprised he hasn't hit anyone with it yet. Redacted. Oh, I thought it was re it's retracted. <laughs> Message retracted. Message is unreadable. <laughs> yeah, I know what you meant. That's the Jun root. You're like, wait a minute, did we just kiss you? <laughs> uh, he can't even look me in the eye. What the hell happened? It's embarrassing. It's concerning is what it is. Hey, is that Mizuguchi-san on the other side of the road over there? Hey, Mizuguchi-san! 
Jun desperately looks around for a second before spotting Saya. As soon as he does, he calls out to her and starts to wave, dashing towards her without a moment's delay. Yeah, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have said it. I kind of, I'm self-reporting myself. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I mean, unfortunately, I do see it on the, uh, was it the chat replay thing? Not the chat replay, the uh, OBS thing that pops up the chat. It doesn't retract the message. So once it's there, it's there, sadly. Oh, well. But he dashes towards her without a moment's delay. Wait! Junsan! Not again! Uh, again? What did... Oh, God damn it. And before I have the chance to finish my question, Aki runs after Jun as well, leaving me alone once again. You people. Is this going to be a running trend today? I mumble under my breath in frustration. More to myself than anything else. This is the fourth time in five minutes. Okay, am I cursed or something? Shaking my head, I take a deep breath to center myself before going to grab my bags from the luggage compartment on the side of the bus. I half expect to find Kaykun here, but when I look around, I notice him also on the other side of the road. Although he's a ways away from the rest of the group. He seems to be... On his phone? What's he doing? The sight of Keikun with that ungodly amount of bags hanging all over him while his phone is madly amusing for some reason. Ah, oh, my eyes! Ah! 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 Help! I'm blinded! As soon as I finish grabbing my stuff... I make up my mind to meet up with my overly moody and shifty friends when, all of a sudden, something, or someone, reaches out from behind me and covers my eyes before I have a chance to react. What the, what the? Guess who? Just good. My body reacts almost immediately. Despite the momentary freeze, I move on pure reflex, elbowing the person behind me straight away and before I have the chance to register whose voice it was I was hearing. Shoichi! Yes! Ah! Yes! Therefore, imagine my surprise when I turn around and see my boyfriend doubled over and clutching his stomach through choking and wheezing. Shoichi? Couldn't you have gotten a little easy on me? Shoichi coughs a few times. Just watching him like this is enough to make me feel bad. I didn't even know it was you. Uh, note to self. Need doesn't react well to surprises. Sorry. Not your fault. I did something stupid thinking it'd be cute. Ah, uh, hold on. Just gotta change that. I mean... Yeah. But I still didn't want to hit you. But if a total stranger grabs you without warning, I wouldn't... Would it be any reasonable per... Blah, blah, blah. But if a total stranger grabs you without warning, wouldn't any reasonable person react like that? Uh, are you okay? I think I might have cracked a rib, but otherwise I'm alright. Oh, come on, I didn't hit you that hard, did I? Nah, you're fine. <laughs> Sorry. I tried to make a joke to lighten up the mood. Ugh, 0 for 2 today, huh? Still, what are you doing here? I thought you said you were heading to class. I almost was. Explain. I did intend to go to class today, but when I messaged Hitsuka mentioning how frustrated I was that I couldn't go today, she <laughs> um, made a suggestion. Oh? Uh, she apparently mentioned it to Mom and her uh, R stepdad. Next thing I know, he kind of offered to lend me his car if I wanted to drive down here today. <laughs> oh, you dork. His car? Yeah, so, uh, if Dad asks, I, would as I was at school this morning, okay? Shoichi skipped class? Shoichi? Wait, no, that's not even the most shocking thing here. Come on, don't lose focus. What do you mean you borrowed his car? 
Since when can you drive? As soon as the question escapes my lips, Shoichi's expression shifts. <laughs> oh, please don't tell me you don't have a license. He stares blankly at me for a second, as if he doesn't know how to respond. Since... I turned 18 last year and got my license? You got your license?! Yes. I just said so. Since when?! <laughs> Since I turned 18? Last year. Come on, me. Keep up. God, th that's... What? Ah! Shuichi-san! Did you manage to find a place to park? Yeah. Took me almost ten minutes, though. It's really chaotic here right now. W wait You guys knew about this? Yes. Shuichi-san is the one that drove us here. He messaged us around the time we were going to be leaving the house and let us know he'd be coming by to pick us up. He did? God, are you seriously going to keep acting shocked over every little thing? There's just so much for my mind to process right now. What about you two? Did you guys know that Shoichi could drive? Not really, but I'm not exactly surprised. You're not? God, don't most people get their licenses when they turn 18? I got mine when I turned 16. They do? I didn't even think of it. W wait, does that mean... I shoot the three other 18-plus members of the group a meaningful look, already dreading the potential answer here. God, don't look at me. I don't have a license. Neither do I. Same here. Oh, thank God. I'm not the only one. I'd have felt really pathetic if I was... Uh, there'd be no real reason for me to get... Uh, since my family doesn't have a car I can use, and I'm planning to move out of the country once I graduate anyway. Getting a license I won't use and would have to pay to renovate would be dumb. Uh, oh. I didn't take mine because the exam is really expensive. And it's rare for people to pass on their first tries. So we couldn't afford to spend that much money. That's... I briefly considered it. But I have drivers to take me everywhere, so... There was no point. Besides, I have... Other... Circumstances that would currently keep me from doing that even if I wanted to. Then, doesn't that mean that... Okay, I'm the only one that completely forgot those were a thing. Man, the look on your face does not inspire confidence. I forgot licenses were a thing in the first place. If you say so. Besides, even if I took mine, I wouldn't have access to a car that I could drive either. So, there, there would be no point for me to get one, right? Yeah, totally. I'm just so big brain that I didn't even have to think about it to know it was a stupid idea. <laughs> That's how it was. Actually, I'm curious now. Have you even driven a car since taking the test, Shotan? Not really. But it's not exactly difficult. The trip here was pretty uneventful. That is, uh, outside of when I went up to pick Jun- ah! uh, you, you don't need to tell him that! Jun-san? This again. What the hell happened? No, sorry, Jukun. I really do need to tell him. That was a really irresponsible thing you did this morning. But-, but... No buts. God, Jin's tail is lashing out again. What the heck? All the suspense is only making me even more curious. What happened? Like Aki-kun said, I went to pick them both up this morning. I got Aki first since their place was closer to my mom's. 
And then we head to Jungkun's house. When I was about to arrive from behind a wall, he just jumps in front of the car, waving at us and calling out to me. What? Excuse me. The three of us very quickly go from curious to shocked to worried. Almost in unison, we turn to look at Jun, who is now trying to do his best impression of an armadillo curling up into himself. Are you insane? And as if that wasn't bad enough, he completely freezes up like a deer in headlights, just locks up and stands in front of the car without moving. I had to slam on the brakes just to keep from running him over. By the time the car stops, the bumper is almost close enough to touch him. You've gotta be kidding me. You didn't even try to move out of the way? I froze, okay? Are you okay at least? Yeah, I'm fine. It was just scary, that's all. Dude, do you think I'd driven down here if I had so much as touched him with the car? We'd be in the hospital right now. <laughs> yeah, we would be. God, there's nothing wrong with making sure. I get the feeling that everyone here is more or less thinking the same thing as me. As in, we're all amazed at how utterly lacking June seems to be in the self-preservation instinct department. However, it'd be cruel to pile on someone who nearly got run over about how dumb it is of them to nearly get run over. So we all collectively decide to bite our tongues on the matter. Uh-oh. My f I should stop sharing for now. It, my f uh, my laptop turned off. Or, sorry, my iPad turned off. It was like, oh, disappeared. I'm like, okay. So we all collectively decide to bite our tongues on the matter. That whole thing aside, though, have you guys registered already? Not yet. We were just stretching our legs for a bit before doing it. We should probably head over there and do it already. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I'm shocked Coach isn't here telling us to do it himself. He didn't seem to be in the mood to be wrangling a bunch of players at the moment. Well, he sure did seem pissed off on the bus, that's for sure. I guess the stress eventually gets to everyone. Not that I don't get it. We all work together towards the entrance area, quickly spotting the small agglomeration in front of the registration desk. The rush to register tends to be at its peak either in the hour before the match starts or in the 10 minutes before the end of the deadline. There really is no in between. Honestly, that is like a lot of beach volleyball tournaments. It's like when it first registers, people are like, oh, finally, and everybody starts, and then it's like the last few minutes, that's when it all gets crazy. It's always like 30 minutes, or 20 minutes before, or 25 minutes, that like, nobody's there. It's so weird. That looks like it's gonna take a while. It always does. It's the worst part of every competition. Really? Signing up is the worst part to you? By far. Weird take, but alright. We should leave you guys to it then. Don't need to contribute to the crowding here when it, we're not even players. <laughs> we'll meet you three inside. Yeah, sure. Uh, see ya. Bye! Uh, bye, betch. Bye, betches. <laughs> Shoichi places a hand on my lower back giving me a meaningful look that lingers for a bit before walking off along with Aki and June. Somehow, the gesture feels very intimate and reassuring without looking all that suspicious. <laughs> nice. You're aware that your tail is wagging, right? Uh, uh, oh, no, no, I'm not! Uh. You definitely were. It was very obvious. <sighs> I... Never should have told you people. Would be too hard to figure out eventually if you're acting like this in public. God, I hate you guys so much right now. Ooh, a few minutes later, tennis time. 
Oh, this is exciting. Once we finally get that out of the way, the three of us head inside and start looking for the others. Thankfully, Shoichi managed to wrangle Jun and Aki together and kept them from wandering around, instead waiting for us by the entrance. Took a bit longer than I expected. Yeah, well, it's a bit of a nightmare right now. Everyone's rushing to the front desk to register. I saw the rest of our clubmates just getting into the line when we were leaving. Hopefully it doesn't take them too long. The lines seem to be thinning out before... Or, the lines seem to have been thinning out a bit when we left, so I'm sure they'll be fine. Did any of you see Coach? Yeah. He was off to the side behind a tree. I think he was smoking. Ah, hopefully he remembers to fan himself off a little bit so the smell isn't that bad. I don't think there's much you can do to short of taking a shower and changing your clothes. That smell is going to be everywhere. True. Speaking of changing, we should probably get that out of the way as well. I don't want to risk being disqualified. Relax. We almost have 20 minutes before we... St we almost have 20 minutes before stuff starts. Besides, you're not even playing first thing. Only Saya-chan and I are. Fine. Don't want to risk you guys being disqualified. Better now? Nika-kun, get off his case. I didn't do anything. Either way, I agree with Kekun. Nika-kun and I really do need to get changed. No problem. We'll be waiting here. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Sometime later. Oh boy, I am nervous. I am nervous. It is tennis time. Ah! Tennis time. I quietly stare at the wall while I wait for my heart rate to stabilize a little. At some point, I completely zoned out and lost track of my surroundings. My body started to move on its own as I chased after that little ball as fast as my legs could carry me. I placed my hand on my chest, feeling it thump rhythmically inside, beating so hard that I could hear it in my ears drowning out the sounds of the crowd. Huh? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Uh, could you repeat? I said that this is your final warning. Proceed with your serve, or you will lose the point. Uh, oh, shit! What about the time violation? It has already been issued. You didn't respond to that. Oh, shit. I'm really sorry. I completely zoned out. I take another deep breath, feeling my mind start to catch up once again. I hadn't even realized that my brain had come to a screeching halt been so focused on my own body that I completely shut down to the outside world. I look forward, looking to my opponent. The fox is standing behind the service line on the other side of the court, waiting for me to serve the ball. With a final deep breath to acknowledge the situation I'm in, I toss the ball up in the air, cho choosing to forego my usual service routine due, a lock due to a lock of time. With the usual train motion, I let my body move like a whip, transferring all that energy at the point of impact while trying to minimize wastefulness. All at once, the ball is fired forward from my racket, darting towards the other side of the court at an impressive speed. So fast, in fact, that the blur was hard for me to even follow. The fox barely manages to react, since the shot bounced a little closer to the center than I would have liked. The ball flew straight at him. Instead of sidestepping and hitting the ball back, the fox nearly trips backwards, only managing to place his racket between him and the ball. Because of that, the ball merely ricochets off the racket, barely making it to my side of the court. I quickly run after it, hitting the ball towards the open side of the court while the fox scrambles to get back on his feet. He tries running after it, but it is far too late. The ball soars past the service line after bouncing, sliding far away and out of reach. Game Mishimaya, five nut or five love. All right, yeah. 
While I'm a little worried by my suddenly zoning out like that, my body is still moving how I want to. No, scratch that. My body is moving even better than usual. There's no denying that I'm responding faster than normal today. My reflexes are sharp and on point, and my precision is also higher than normal. I'm being able to hit the ball a lot harder than I normally would, and still managing to keep it from sailing out of bounds. The fox tries his back to mount some kind of resistance during his own serve game, but I quickly move to attack it, using a mixture of strong flat shots and high bouncing spin shots to steal the points. He seems to be confident in both his forehand and backhand, but it's very clear he's not comfortable trying to deal with these kinds of heavy balls that cause him to strain every time he returns my shots. It became clear to me that at least a few games ago that he was beginning to feel it in his wrists, which only caused me to ramp up my efforts to hit as hard as possible. I don't take any pleasure in causing another player pain or physical discomfort, but I'm in it to win. I can't afford to let an opportunity pass me by when I notice it. And because of that, before long, game Set and match, won by Mishamaya. Count, 6-2, six, 6-love. This is really one-sided, jeez. <sighs> yes. I fist pump as soon as the Empire calls out my final point, feeling the rush of adrenaline coursing through my body once again. I have an overwhelming urge to keep running around in circles to spend this excess of energy in me right now. But instead... I make my way to the net, where I exchange a hand and a few brief words with the other player. That's my second and last match for... That's my second and last match of the day. I almost feel a little sad thinking about it. I feel so energetic right now, and I desperately want to play some more. But... I also know it's not good to overwork myself. So I'll behave and step out of the court without making an issue about it. Once I finish putting my things away and wiping myself clean with the towel, I grab my bags and head out, joining my friends in the gallery. Ah, Nikki, that was amazing! You are on fire! Was I? Well, I felt pretty good out there today, but I don't know if I'd go that far. You were already plenty impressive during your first match, but this one? I had an urge to walk off and start practicing around halfway through. They're right, Nee. You did really great out there today. So proud of you. Aww. Shuichi reaches towards me with his bag, or his... He reaches towards me with his big hand, placing it on top of my head and giving me a few encouraging pets. Normally, I've swat his hand away since we're in public, but I'm so happy right now that I decide to let him. <laughs> Aw, thank you guys. It feels so great to hear. The whole day kind of went by like a blur. I stepped into the court for my first match, and then, before I knew it, we were coming back from lunch. I barely even remember the in-between. I've completely zoned out since this morning. Or maybe it's the more accurate to say that I focused. The one way or another, I feel like I barely interacted with my friends. My mind has been taken by nothing other than the thoughts of tennis. I kept going over every single rally in my mind. The things I did well, my mistakes, my winners, what I thought I needed to improve. It all keeps replaying on repeat as I analyze the dis... the disrespect. It all keeps replaying on repeat as I analyze and dissect every aspect of my gameplay. Without even noticing, I was not only formulating strategies in my head, but also a training plan to account for the things I think I need to work on. It's been years since I felt like this. Truth be told, I'd almost forgotten what this feeling was like. What about Saya? I don't see her here. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, your match was pretty fast. But apparently so did the match on her court. 
She was called away sometime around the fourth game. Chun-san went with her and to keep us updated. See? Aki shows me his phone, letting me see the text conversation between him and Jun. Seems Sai is still in her first game. Not all that surprising since she tends to drag things out, though. I mean, she also has the match after us, so, I mean, she's supposed to be behind us in the schedule. If you're done here, we should probably get going, too. We wouldn't want to miss much of her match, do we? For sure. Can you just give me a second? I think I need to drink something. I guess I didn't realize how thrifty. <laughs> For sure. Uh, can you just give me a second? I need to drink something. I guess I didn't realize how thirsty I was until now. I'll go buy you something at the vending machine. Are you sure? Of course. Yeah, be right back. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go on ahead then. I kind of want to see her match, so I don't feel like waiting. <laughs> sure. Shuichi and Aki walk off in opposite directions, leaving only KSK and I standing here and waiting. You're not gonna go with Aki? Oh, I don't mind waiting a bit. Besides, I'd like to talk to you some more. Oh? If you don't mind me asking, what was going through your head during the second set there? You zoned out for a moment. We were afraid you were going to get a point docked since you weren't answering. Ah, that. It's kind of embarrassing. I was feeling really good out there, so I started thinking about it. I ended up getting distracted thinking about how I was feeling. My heart was racing pretty hard, and I was enjoying the feeling. Plus, there was that slight tension in my muscles. The feeling of air going in and out of my lungs. The clarity going on in my head. I guess I got a little drunk on those sensations and forgot about the rest of the world. Huh, hmm. Uh, that's very interesting. Indeed. <gasps> Tanabe! It's Tanabe! Indeed. <laughs> it's me! It's me! I'm in the visual novel! It's me! <laughs> no, I kid. My eyes quickly snap to the source of a familiar voice just in time to recognize... Him. Ooh, he is a hot stuff right there. Ooh, ooh, look at this guy. A red panda walks up to the two of us, crossing his arms as soon as he comes to a stop. A smile on his face. It's Tanabe-kun. Hello, Nika-san. It's been a while. Y yeah, it kinda has. It's Tanabe-san, were you listening to us? Ah, I'm sorry. Urushahara-kun. I guess it might sound a bit like that. I assure you that I wasn't trying to eavesdrop. I was coming over to say hello and... Happened to catch the tail end of your conversation. You were coming over to say hello? But, but why? You usually never do that. You remember me? Of course. I make it a point to remember the players that interest me. Interest you? Indeed. You have a very unusual style. One not too dissimilar from mine and certain areas. Besides, isn't it only natural to be interested by things you don't get to see often? At the very least, I've been tracking your progress ever since I saw your match against Kokonos during the Saitama Prefectural a few months ago. Whew, I was very impressed. Uh, actually, no. Take that back. I was only just regularly impressed. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say. That's quite all right. If anything, I find it a bit of a shame how you were placed in the brackets for the competition. <laughs> if luck had permitted, I would have liked the opportunity to play against all three of you. <sighs> Yet, we ended with a layout that makes it so I can only play against one of you. It's... 
vexing. The three of us? You mean Yu Yakun too? Of course. <laughs> he reminds me a great deal of you a few years ago. It made me really look forward to playing against him. Especially considering how you've been struggling in the past few years. Uh, oh, my heart! <laughs> That's a little harsh to say, isn't it? I know Tanabe-kun isn't the type to say things with malice. He's the type to bluntly state the truth, whatever it is. But you could dress it up a little. That is, of course, until now. Uh, 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 what is happening? Uh, I'm scared. Your improvement since the perfectual stage a few months ago has been jaw-dropping. Seeing it has made me eagerly anticipate a chance for us to play again. <laughs> I haven't felt this excited in quite a long time, to be honest. Oh, whoa! Oh my god! This dude is intimidating. My balls are scared. He did the glasses thing. Just like in the anime! <laughs> whoa! That's not the kind of thing I expect to hear from him. At all! You think so? Absolutely. Watching your last match has only just confirmed it for me. I saw a glimpse of the Nikakun I used to admire so long ago in there. I can't wait for a chance to play against you again. This might be a little rude on my part, but... I truly hope you make your way to me in the finals. Even if it means I don't get to play against Kokonos or Urushahara. No offense to you, of course, Urushahara-kun. None taken? I think. KSK is looking around, seeming so bewildered and unsure of how to respond. I don't exactly blame him. Tanabe-kun is pretty easygoing most of the time. He gets downright intense when tennis is involved. Here you go, Nick. Ah, hello there, Tanabe-san. You. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is just too fun. Shoichi comes back with a bottle of what looks like a lemon-flavored drink in his hand. Better begin that lemon cello. He tries to hand it to me, but upon noticing the presence of the red panda, his entire body tenses up. Even the fur around the back of his neck bristles up. He is so tiny compared to them. He's me-sized. Actually, no, wait. I forgot. Is KSK like 5'9"? Or is he 5'11 like, or something? I forgot. I know Nico or Yuichi, technically, our MC is 6' flat. And then, of course, Shoichi's a few inches taller than that, so... I don't know. I told you folks, it's it's me in the visual novel. It's me, I swear. <laughs> nah, I kid. <laughs> he tries to hand it to me. Oh no, I read that already. His neck bristles up. Who? Oh, mm, wait. You're a Ruta. You're a Ratha son, right? It's been a while since I've last seen you. I barely recognize you. Yeah, well, you guys don't really, or you guys never really hung out together. We, or, Jesus Christ, I can't speak. You scared me so much, Tanabe. Yeah, well, you guys didn't really hang out together even when you and I were closer. And Shoichi's gotten quite a lot taller since then, too. Tanabe-kun looks Shoichi up and down, his face crunching up in the process. Yes, <laughs> He certainly has. What's with the way you said that? Did you click your tongue? Is there some kind of problem here? Not at all. Somehow I'm having trouble believing you. Regardless, I merely came by to wish you luck on the rest of the competition. I look forward to playing against you soon, Nico-kun. Thanks. Same here. As for Ratakun, Tanabe-kun turns to face Kekun, staring the hair in the eye. 
Immediately upon having his name called by him, Keikun tenses up completely. Seriously, what's even going on with the muscles on your face? <laughs> That's hilarious. Y yes I look forward to your match against Kokonos Kun. <laughs> I have my last match of the day slotted for the same time. But I'll make sure to finish it quickly so I can watch yours. Now, if you'll excuse me. Uh oh, say. Keisuke tries to mutter something, but Tanabe kun had already left before he managed to get even two words out. Which might have been fortunate for him, considering how he tripped over himself here. Uh, yeah, Case K is 5'10", yeah, okay. So, I mean, when we looked at him... Oh, he's a lot shorter, yeah, he's like 5'6". He's got, like, short libero vibes for, like, volleyball. He's got short libero vibes of, like, like small but intimidating type of personality. Like, he is gonna be scrappy as hell. Oh, short people like that, that are, like, your 5'6", five, 5'7 five, players? Holy crap, they are the scrappiest sons of bitches ever. They will make your life a living hell when you play against them. Usually indoor especially, but if they have a really good vertical, I knew people that were like 5'7", five, 5'6", five, that... Not too many, but like one or two that had massive verticals. And they were like power combos. If it weren't for them being like, oh, too short for collegiate NCAA, like... They would be like competing with those guys, especially in the high school club level. They were fearsome. Like, I straight up knew a guy like that, and he was, like, a great outside hitter, despite his height. But unfortunately, in college, they made him, like, a Libro, just because they're like, oh, you're short. <laughs> I was like, damn it, I like that guy. He's so good. <laughs> yeah, which might have been fortunate for him, considering how he tripped over himself there. Actually, I think he might have bitten his tongue. You okay there? Yeah. My tongue. Yes, I was right. I gently rub Keikun's back in an attempt to be comforting, which he doesn't seem to take issue with. What about you, Shoichi? You've got weirdly serious. I don't like that guy. Oh. I wasn't expecting him to say something like that so openly. I love him. <laughs> oh my god, that would be horrible. I think... Guys? Gals? Non-binary pals? I have a secret ship idea that might be the dumbest thing ever, but honestly, I would vibe with it. Folks. Folks. Tanabe X Hardiki. Think about it. Just think about it. Anyway, I wasn't expecting him to say something like that so openly. How come? Or how come? It sounded like you two barely knew each other. You would be right, but I still don't like him. He did a lot of damage to Nico. I can't help but resent him for it. That? It's not that big of a deal. Damage? What exactly? Emotional damage! <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. Like I said, it's not a big deal. Knee. Fair enough. Is he always like that, by the way? Tanabe-san, I mean. He was. Intense? Yeah. He scared me a little bit when he talked about watching my match. He can be like that. He takes tennis really serious. <laughs> way more than anyone I know. Oh my god, he reminds me of my character I have in my VN. <laughs> also a Libero. <laughs> you can all probably tell who it is if you've played any of the previous days. He's got the same logic vibe. Facts and logic. <laughs> Way more than even I used to. That's the whole reason we fell out with each other in the first place. He doesn't tend to take an interest in that many people, though. You should feel flattered. You say that, but that doesn't help to make me less uneasy. Uh, to be fair, it's not often that we talk like that. It's not? 
Tanabe Kun hasn't really chatted with me much in the last few years. We used to be close friends and talked a lot, but ever since the end of middle school, things have been a little more distant. We never really talk during competitions anymore. Also another interesting ship dynamic. I'm not sure how well they would click though on the initial. They would have to get over the barrier. That's the thing for them. I could see them once they pass the barrier clicking, but right now I just don't see the vibes checking out really well. We'd exchange a few words right before our matches, but you'd always look so frustrated and angry about something after them. Most people tend to be happy after they win. God, but Tanabe would look downright pissed. This is the closest we ever gotten to him being friendly with me again. God, that's not fair. It reminds me of how we used to be before. Now I miss that talk. Er, now I miss that Takagi all. Wait, wait, was Takagi the tiger? What? Now. Now I miss that Takagi all over again. Oh wait, was Takagi his last name? Was it Tanabe Tak- Fuck. <laughs> now I miss that Takagi all over again. Ugh. I really do hate that guy. Uh-huh. You can't expect to look like you're about to cry right in front of me and not want me to get mad at the person who got you like that. Uh, about to cry? I didn't look like- you kinda did, Nikosan. What? No way! I was just thinking about stuff. Ugh, crap! Control your face, Nico. Tanabe Kun better top on Keisuke Kun. Oh, so I was like Senpai X Junior. Who's that? I'm like, oh yeah, now I get it. Senpai X Junior could be a hot idea. Like, I guess, like, in terms of that, yeah, I get it, but I just mean in terms of just general personalities. The barrier for the two would be tough, but over the barrier, I could see them being, like, both in that. They would really teach each other, and just, they both have a good, like, down-to-earth on their shoulders personality. They're, they'd be similar, though. Like, it's not like a Nico case k dynamic or, uh, mmm trying to think of who else would be like that because i mean case is more of the straight man in that relationship <laughs> pun not intended but pun kind of intended but at least i feel like with haruki and um tanabe it would be a little more of like you got the live wire but they both have that like serious no bullshit mentality and i think that would be an easier hurdle to come over but then of course they would have to actually meet and stuff but <laughs> assuming all that happens they meet Ugh, crap. Anyway, crap. Control your face, Nico. Let's just get going, okay? Oh, is it Takage Tanabe? I forgot Tanabe was the last name. But they just call him Tanabe? We don't want to miss Saya-chan's match. But... I grabbed the bottle of Shuichi's hand, quickly opening it and downing half its contents all in one go. <laughs> there! All better! <laughs> Let's go now. All right, all right. We'll go. Just don't drink it too fast. You'll spill. It's fine. Don't worry so much. Shoichi rubs the bridge of his nose, letting out a slow, drawn-out sigh before nodding. Without wasting any more time, I turn around and set out on my way to Saya's court. Unable or unwilling to argue, the two of them follow obediently behind me. Oh, right. I should probably go inform the front desk of my match results first, huh? Don't just casually forget important stuff like that! Oops. Guess he couldn't hold it in anymore. It's kind of a relief, though. Seeing Shuichi trying so hard not to lecture me or get mad feels so... unnatural. Having him let it out actually puts me in a lot more at ease. Sometime later... I get the feeling that 
This might be like a 32 team format. I'm not too sure. I get confused because there's inconsistencies. Did we have two matches yesterday? Or is it one match today, two tomorrow? Well, fuck. One match today, two to. God damn it. One yesterday, two today. And is it going to be three tomorrow? That's what's confusing me. <laughs> I'm asking this as a very meta, like, commenter thing. I really hope that, like, Basket and all the people involved in tennis Ace just don't look at me and be like, God damn it, Dirk, stop being so obsessed with this crap. <laughs> I'm sorry, I am Saya. Even Saya would be like, hold on a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> anyway, unsurprisingly... Saya ended up obliterating her opponent once again. <laughs> she just did the hand obliterating dissolve thing. <laughs> the guy just gets completely dissolved. Watching her matches is almost anticlimactic in a sense. It doesn't go fast, but it's so one-sided to the point that I can't help but feel bad for the people she's playing against. You could make the argument that some of my matches are like that as well. But not every single one. Saya Chan has already reached the point where she has no rivals whatsoever left in our age range, and it shows. Badly. Very interesting dynamic. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> Once she came out, we quickly surround her, showing her in praise for another solid performance. Having won with a final score of 6 love, 6 love. Obliterated. Like I said, one sided. I very quickly tuned out the conversation going on, however, finding myself unable to focus all that well. Thankfully, I was at least able to disguise it by pretending that exhaustion had finally caught up to me. In reality, having tanabe -kun approach me like that has gotten me to remember a whole lot of things. It ended up throwing me out of sorts. I only... Oh, the only one that seemed to catch on to that fact is Shoichi. It was almost unnerving how often I seemed to notice his eyes on me for the rest of the day, watching me like a hawk trying to find... something. Not sure what. I try my best to give him no reason to worry about me, but I don't think I've been all that successful. Eventually, however, we reached the point that Sai and I had been most looking forward to today. And that is... Are you ready? As ready as I can be. Good luck, Case Case san Yeah, we'll be rooting for you. Case Case Court has been cleared, and the officials begin calling for the players to head inside. Just gonna double check. I did predict that there would be a match before it. The only issue is... Is the match before it a round four match? Or is it or technically a quarterfinal, sorry. Is it technically a quarterfinal match? Or is it meant to be a... Uh, the match before, is it just a round three and everybody... Sorry, I'm questioning this too much. It's weird because Nico played at the fifth match slot. Saya played her last match at the sixth match slot. And then Case K played his at the seventh. It's really odd because... Three whole slots for, uh, if it's quarterfinals, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why would you need three slots for eight? God damn it, I'm thinking too hard about this. Unless this is the round of 16, and they are facing each other in the round of 16. But we did, fuck, I, we did say quarterfinals. I, I'm gonna stop talking about it. I have my iPad here just looking at it, going, this doesn't make sense. Chat, it doesn't make sense. We must figure it out. Where the heck is my Zoom meeting window? Oh, back to meeting. Chat, we must figure it out. 
I'm just gonna share it one last time. Chat, this, it doesn't make sense. The bracket, it doesn't make sense. We must know what it is. We must figure this bracket out. What is going on? Who is facing who? All right, that's enough of my chaos for now. Let's get back to it. Case Case Court has been cleared and the officials began calling for the players to head inside. Yuya-kun seemed to waste no time, having jogged inside the instant the name was called. Kei-kun, on the other hand, lagged behind for a little while, taking several deep breaths and putting his game face on before going in. You've got this, Arushahara. Don't let him get in your head again. I won't. At least have some faith in me. <laughs> I've got plenty of faith. But that doesn't mean I still don't worry. I find that hard to believe. But whatever. I'm going on. Oh, I'm excited. It's tennis time. Tennis time. Gripping his bag strap extra tightly, Keikun took one last breath before walking out into the court. The two players began hitting the ball back and forth after doing their basic warm-ups. After a few minutes of this, the match will start for real. What do you think, Nico? You've played against the both of them. So, what do you think Urushahara's odds are? It's hard to say. Keikun has improved a whole lot since the last time they played. But, Yuya-kun is the unpredictable type. He has a nasty habit of improving right in front of your eyes, so you can't really anticipate how much he'll be able to match someone. Sounds like someone I know. No comment. Shoichi and Saya both laugh under their breath, sharing a fist bump between them back, all the time thinking they are so sneaky. I choose to ignore it. The umpire quickly called for both players to go to the net and greet each other before flipping the coin to decide who would start with the serve. <sighs> I can't really make out what they're saying when they're this far, but it seems like Keikun won the toss. Unsurprisingly, at least to some, he chooses to let Yuya-kun serve first. There are a few murmurs among the crowd. And I can even spot the Akita raising an eyebrow at his decision. But those of us who know him can only half-heartedly smile at it. That really is a bad habit of his, isn't it? Normal people would choose to serve themselves. I shake my head, unconsciously letting out a throaty chuckle. Having played against Keikun more times than anyone else, I'm more than familiar with that habit of his by now. If he hasn't played against someone much before, he'll let them serve so he can study their habits and come up with a counter strategy to deal with them. And if he has played enough to have their mannerisms and tics memorized, he'll still let them serve first so he immediately tries to break their serve. Having your serve broken can be incredibly stressful especially if it's the very first serve of the match. It sets the pace for the rest of the game and can throw someone majorly out of it. Keikun has a bit of a nasty streak on him considering how often he'll try to resort to mind games. But I also understand he's just trying to do whatever he can to win. The Hare and the Kira take their respective positions on the court. I instinctively hold my breath in anticipation when Yunya kun raises his head and locks eyes with Keikun while gripping the ball tightly in his hand. Come on, Keikun. You can do this. I close my eyes, putting a hand over my chest, taking a deep breath. For some reason, I feel even more tense about this than I do my own matches. I just want Keikun to win. And we got absolutely ass-blasted. <laughs> Cheers!
We all clink our glasses together as we toast the end of the second day of competition. As soon as we get back to the hotel, we made sure to scurry into Case K and I's room so we could celebrate and relax together. Hey, at least they won! June and Shuichi went out to buy his all food while the rest of us stuck around to wait and set a table for everyone. Ordinarily, we would have done it by the hotel lobby, but since not everyone managed to survive elimination in the second day, we didn't want to seem disrespectful to them. It took a bit under half an hour to have everything ready, but we finally had food and drinks for the whole group. Incidentally, we could have eaten the hotel food, but then there would have been none for Shuichi, Aki, and Jun. You did a great job today, Keikun. Once again, congratulations. Thank you, Nico-san. Honestly, you have no idea how relieved I am myself. I can more or less imagine. Hey, cheers to, uh, whatever his name is, Case K. <laughs> Watching Case K's match already was nerve-wracking. I can't begin to imagine how it must have felt for him playing it. He started off with a strong lead, quickly breaking Yuyakun's serve, or his first serve, and winning the first set 6-2. However, in true Yuya fashion, the Akita soon started getting used to him and catching up. By the time they got halfway through the second set, the situation was almost completely flipped on its head. In the end, Kankun managed to barely squeeze out a win during the third set. The match with a score of 6-2, 6-7... 6-5. I could barely even breathe during the last game, and I ended up screaming myself hoarse when KSK scored the winning point. The two shared a few words at the end of the match before Yuyakun slinked away, looking dejected. It was quite telling that he didn't even bother coming up to us to chat after the match. I'm sure he wasn't expecting that kind of result, so... I can understand. Not that I imagine that keeping him down for too long, though. He just doesn't seem to be the type to. My ears are still ringing from how loudly we cheered at the end there. I appreciate the enthusiasm. Sorry about your ears, though. It's all good. Feels like a fair trade-off. KSK chuckles. We all share food and drinks while chatting idly about whatever topic comes to mind. Of course, most of it ends up being about the competition. What matches we enjoyed the most, what we were looking forward to, what our opinion on events so far is, that kind of thing. My meeting with Tanabe-kun ends up being broad and passing, but I thankfully managed to change the subject before long. The sushi that Shuichi bought for everyone ended up being pretty high quality, to the point that a few of us felt bad and wanted to pay him back, but he insisted on having it be his treat. I'm just glad Keikun didn't get eliminated. It would have felt really awkward sleeping tonight if he did. Even if he decided to stick around. I know, right? It would suck so much to go to bed alone after rooming together for two nights. As soon as I hear Saya's reaction, I realize that I screwed up. Keiku and I exchange a look as he silently pities me. Or at least I assume that that's pity in his eyes. Hayato and the two of the girls go eliminated during the third round while the last of the girls, Ayane, got eliminated during the quarterfinals. Shoot, so it was quarterfinals day. F's in chat for the girls. For Case K and I, surviving so far meant at least the two of us would see the last day of competition together, even if one of us is bound to be eliminated tomorrow morning during the semifinal. For Saya, however, it means that she'll be sleeping alone in her room thanks to the eliminated girls deciding they didn't want to stick around. It's not uncommon to have eliminated players head home early instead of sticking around. It can be quite demoralizing to stay and watch your friends play when you yourself can't. Oh, I knew how that felt when I went to those national events and my team wouldn't get knocked out of the gold bracket. 
That was always fun. I don't think I ever made it to the gold bracket at Nationals. Nope, not once. Only in the regional events. But it still feels a little cold that out of the four of them, no one wanted to stay. They could have at least stayed to cheer. Maybe they just chose not to stay the night, but will show up tomorrow to watch? Oh, I doubt it. Apparently, Saya's roommate stopped her on her way upstairs to let her know she would be packing her stuff and taking the train home as soon as she could. I guess that's one of the upsides of team sports. Presumably, you and your friends are all on the same team. You either make it or break it together. If you get eliminated, everyone goes home together. No one gets left behind. I guess. We'll still be here to cheer you up tomorrow, Sayani. <laughs> Thanks, Aki-chan. That makes me feel a little better. Do you think they already left? Probably. We don't exactly bring much stuff with us on trips. It doesn't take long to pack up. Somehow, hearing that coming from the person that brought on almost overwhelming number of bags at least feels a little bit off. I... Kinda feel bad for mentioning that I'll have to leave soon. Feels like a bad time to say it, but... It's true. It's fine. I get that it's getting late. Counterpoint. Objection. If time was such an issue, maybe you shouldn't have gone out for sushi. Sushi is a good celebration food. I'm not saying that it isn't. But making a large order on the spot like that takes a while. You guys were out for a good 40 minutes. If you'd gone to the convenience store and bought a few packaged meals, we could have hung out for at least an extra half an hour. Convenience store food for a celebration feels kind of sad, though. It's either time or food. You have to pick one or the other. God, Shuichini has a point. It's getting a bit late. It's already dark out and everything. It's not as big of a deal since we already had dinner, so that's one less thing to worry about when getting home, but... Plus, we all got a ride from Shuichi-san this morning. If we don't go back with him, we'll have to take the train. That too. <laughs> train is not an option for me. For me, it's either car or nothing. We'll at least help you guys clean up before we go. Jun quickly gets up as he makes his offer, grabbing the empty bags, bottles, cans and the likes, putting them all in the large, empty trash bag that he and Shuichi also brought along with the food to dispose of everything after we were done. I initially praised Shuichi on the foresight when they came back, but was quickly surprised to hear that it had been Jun's idea all along. Gasp! Though I made sure to keep though I made sure to keep that a surprise to myself and apologize for assuming Shoichi was the one to think of it. We all pitched in with the cleanup. Thankfully, it doesn't take long since we didn't buy all that much stuff in the first place. Just a couple of minutes and the room is back to how it was before we got here. However, there's a kind of melancholic feeling feeling that comes with it. I guess it always feels like that when you're clearing up after a party. Or maybe that's just a me thing. Who knows? Come on, let's head downstairs. We'll see you guys out. We will? I was hoping to take a break. God, ow, 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 my ear. Mizuguchi-san. Jeez. How can you be so thick? Saya-chan's intentions had been very clear from the start. Yet Keikun struggled to see... Ke er, yet Keikun seemed to struggle catching on to it. Because of it, she ended up grabbing him by the ear and dragging him along with her while he yelped and protested in vain. I'll give him a break since I imagine he's suffering from all kinds of exhaustion after his match earlier today. But... 
Shoichi and I both share a meaningful look, stifling the urge to laugh. I'll be downstairs in a second. Let me just make sure I didn't forget my wallet or anything important first. Okay. The excuse isn't the best, but it's not like it's needed in the first place. In fact, I'm pretty sure everyone other than Kei-kun, Aki included, knows what's up. But it only feels right to go along with it since Saya-chan went through the trouble trying to be subtle about it. Soon, Shoichi and I are left alone in the room, just as Saya-chan intended. Man, I really hope Urushihara's ear will be okay. I was afraid Sai was going to rip it off. <laughs> he shouldn't have resisted. He shouldn't have resisted! Oh god, I hate that lot. Uh, cries an American. I laugh off Shuichi's concern as a pleasant silence washes over the two of us for a moment. I try to think of something to say, even if it's just in an effort to make idle conversation, but it ultimately proves unnecessary. <gasps> ah! <laughs> Shoichi steps towards me until our chests are nearly bumping, looking down at me with his bright green eyes. I wish I could stick around longer. You'd get in trouble. Hell, you still might get in trouble considering you skipped class today to come here in the morning. <laughs> that was totally worth it, though. I hope you still think so when your dad is... Shoichi cut me off mid-sentence, closing the gap between us and planting a kiss on my lips. The words that were stuck in my throat turn into a coup as I quickly get let myself sink into that feeling, leaning forward to reciprocate. C God, Shoichi, at least give me a warning next time. <laughs> and give me my advantage? Or give up my advantage? Never. Oh, he's so adorable! <laughs> I playfully smack the husky's chest, gently nudging him away from me in the process as we pull apart. God, you're a dumbass. I don't see you complaining. How astute. Shoichi chuckles, covering his mouth with his face and shaking his head. Come on, let's head downstairs. It'd be rude to leave everyone waiting for too long. This Especially after Saya-chan went out of her way to give us some time alone. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't want to, but I know Shoichi can't hang around forever. The two of us begin heading downstairs, holding hands as we soon realize the hallway is empty and only bothering to separate when we reach the front desk. Saya... Kekun and I wait outside as we say our farewells to the rest of the group for the night, watching them leave for a bit under the warm summer air before heading back inside. When Kekun and I head back to the room to wait, when Kekun and I head back, when Kekun and I head to the bath together, I remark somewhat sadly that the place feels a bit lonely tonight. Even if Hayato Kun was the only other guy in our group. The knowledge that everyone save the three of us was eliminated is enough to make place or the knowledge that everyone save the three of us was eliminated is enough to make the place feel a lot quieter than usual. Hold on. Enhance. 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 What seed is Hayato? In that case, we have Keisuke, Nico, Tanabe, and Hayato as our final four. That means Kiko Chihara got eliminated. Unless Hayato's last name is Kiko Chihara. But, I don't know. Kiko Chihara is not part of our group, though. I thought Keisuke was the next best player in our entire club. Anyway. He probably upset the fourth seed. Maybe he was the fifth seed. 
Or maybe he was Aki's classmate and he was the 13th seed that upset him. That was my prediction. Anyway. Oh, it is more quieter than usual. Ah! That was the last line, goddammit! I could have ranted for as long as I wanted! And the end of the reading is here. 239.30. That concludes our reading. Hey guys, you've reached the current end of the Shuichi build. I hope you've enjoyed what you've managed to play so far. As you guys may or may not know, all development in Tennessee is possible thanks to all my amazing patrons and other supporters who make it possible for me to dedicate the time and work on the game, as well as commission the art for it. If you haven't already, or and if you're able, maybe you should... Jesus Christ, I, sorry Basque, I'm messing your lines up. If you haven't already, and if you're able... Maybe you can consider to help to support us too. Just click here and you'll be taken right to my Patreon page. Link in description. Did I click it by accident? I think I just clicked it. <laughs> I just hit it and then the bar just got stuck. Uh-oh. I broke Tennis Ace. We'll pretend that did not happen. Oh, it opened. Once again, thank you all, and we'll see each other with the next demo. <laughs> Everything just lagged since I clicked the link. Oh, there we go. So that is it for Tennis Ace, and if anybody wants to see my chaos still unfold... Where did I put it? Okay, now it turned off. Um, back to meeting. That is the end of our update. And once again, if anybody was really obsessed with it, here is my gosh darn thing. Here's my gosh heckin' darn tennis ace thing. There we go, much better. So based on our bracket in this dimension, in this parallel universe, case case. Fa. Fa. Case K made it to the quarterfinals. He was already here, I mean. But he made it up to here, and this is where he faced Yuya. At least Yuya was a quarterfinalist. I mean, he did pretty well for being a freshman. And Keisuke... And then, of course, we got Mishimaya. Ooh, that is ugly. Class, you're going to be tested on this. And if you fail, you are banned from my streams. Is that a fair deal? So, we have... Whatever the hell that guy's name was. Hayato. And obviously Tanabe is going to be here. He is not going to be like... Yeah. He will not be eliminated just yet. This is our semifinal. Aw, no problem, Brindle. I did get possessed by Professor Dirk. <laughs> Y'all failed. Go home. <laughs> Alright, here's our semifinal. And obviously, 
it all we care about really is Saya and her subby finals and stuff so get ready for this on day 37 that'll be hype we'll just have to replay this again with case k's updates so it'll be a life in replay i'll still figure out if this was a 32 or a 64 team bracket because i swear it said 64 at one point then i thought it was only one match the first day so i'm calculating the math i'll have to look at this afterwards so we'll leave that for now we'll stop sharing I'll quit out of gosh darn Zoom. Alright, so. That was a fun stream. <laughs> Glad we all had a good time today. So, I'm getting a bit hot in here because I don't have the fan on yet. And it's hot out today. I actually went to the beach and I am just fried. Not fried. My brain's fried. Luckily I didn't burn that bad. I was trying to actually get a little tan. First time I've been to the beach this summer. So, yeah, that was fun. So, sadly, I'll have to cut things off here. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care, folks.